What's up everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna continue building a land, but, it, but we're actually gonna do it in real life. So, this is a eight port Netgear unmanaged switch. Now what that means is that it has firmware on it, which is software that's hard coded onto the device that's really not designed to change. Now, typically a manufacturer will build in some type of process to update the firmware or reinstall the firmware, but really it's not able to be configured. It doesn't have many security settings. It's just really designed to switch traffic, which is meaning that this device is learning MAC addresses and then making associations between computers on the network by learning the MAC addresses of every device connected to it. Now, that would be considered an unmanaged switch, meaning there's really no manageability to the switch. Now, other switches out there, managed switches, which we'll talk about in a future video, those have a lot more configuration options, a lot more security options, uh, and a lot more ways to segment networks. However, we're going to go ahead and build our network. So you see here I've got my Mac and then behind the camera I have my Surface Book 2 which is also where I capture this video and the audio. Um, we're going to connect those together. So you'll see here's my star, right, or my star topology. This is going to be my central connecting point. I'll go ahead and set that down. You'll see an Ethernet cable here, also known as a copper straight through as we saw in Packet Tracer. This is, of course, what it looks like in real life, if you didn't already know. Connect one end to the switch. This is typically how it is. And then the other end goes into the port on the, the device. So this MacBook is like from 2012, which is very durable. It, it, uh, it was from the age when laptops used to have ports on them or uh, network interface cards or network interface controllers. So you'll notice right now that this light started blinking. This is what's called a link light and it, it's typically on a network interface and it detects a physical electrical signal passing between both sides. Now if this was off, the switch, if I unplugged it, you wouldn't see the light of course. And if I disconnect you'll notice the light comes off. So in your troubleshooting process, when you're trying to figure out maybe a network connectivity issue, you always want to take the proper steps, starting with, hey, do I even have a physical connection? Is there a blinking light? Because on the back of some desktop computers, you'll see a link light as well, uh, and that's what you can call it. So the link light on the NIC. And a switch is just really you know, a low-powered computer with a bunch of NICs. So we're going to connect to the other end because this isn't enough to have a network, not just one computer. So I'm going to grab my other cable. As you can see here, this cable. And then I'm going to show you another type of device you may not have already known about called a USB NIC, which is right here. This is a USB NIC, which means for devices that don't have the capability to be wired directly, you can plug this in via USB and have a physical network connection to your device. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and connect it. I will show you the desktop for the time being and I'm going to show you how to set an IP address in Windows. So you'll hear the chiming of Windows. You know when you hear that, that's just a driver being loaded in. And here we go. So the best way I know how to do this, just to be sure that you're setting things up correctly, is by going to Control Panel. So you'll go to the search up here and go Control Panel. Then go to Network and Internet, Network and Sharing Center, Change Adapter Settings. Notice how I have two NICs, or two Network Interface Cards, or Network Interface Controllers. Those terms can be used interchangeably. One's for Wi-Fi, which I've disabled, and that's normally how I'm connected to the internet. And then one is this Ethernet adapter I've just plugged in. So I'm gonna right-click that, go to Properties, 
IPv4. Use the following IP address. Notice how it is normally set to receive one automatically from DHCP, which is dynamic host configuration protocol. That's a server over a network that leases out IP addresses. So we're just not going to do that for now. I'll show you that later on. We're just building from scratch. So I'm going to set the IP. Since I've set the IP on my laptop as 192.168.0.10 on the MacBook laptop, I can't use the same IP address more than once on the network. That will create what's called an IP conflict. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it dot 11. So do 192.168.0.11. When I hit tab, it autofills to the correct subnet mask. So if a IP address is like a phone number, your subnet mask is like the area code. It tells you which part of your IP address belongs to the network and which IP address belongs to hosts. In other words, it lets us know which portion needs to match and which portion needs to change. Uh, I will go into a full lesson on IP addressing, but for now, all I need you to understand is that basic principle that you need to be in the same network, which means these first three spaces or first three octets match, and then the fourth octet changes, right? All these other fields, don't worry about them for now. We're going to cover them in another video. Remember, we're approaching this from a walk, I'm sorry, crawl, walk, run philosophy. So each, each video, we pick up the pace. So what I've done here is I've set my IP. Now I'm going to hit OK. Hit OK again. Make sure you hit that twice in Windows. And then guess what? We need to go ahead and connect our other cable. So I'm going to go ahead and show you as I do that. So here's my other cable. I'll connect it to this end of the adapter. And then I'm going to connect it to the switch. And how do we know if it connects? I'll let you guess. You should be able to see a light surface, right? Notice how the other one went to sleep. It's because this laptop right here went to sleep. So you see the link light will start back up as soon as you wake up the laptop. So cool. Now what we can do is we can move forward with trying to ping, which is typically the first step you want to take on a network that you've just built. Or uh, as soon as you set up the network device on the network for the first time, you want to make sure it gets an IP address or you've set an IP address. And then you want to try to ping or try to do some type of connection test. What ping does is it sends an ICMP echo request, meaning it's requesting a reply. So I'm going to go ahead and ping 192.168.0.10. And I'm getting replies. Now let me tell you, if I was pinging a Windows machine right now, I would actually get denied. And let me tell you why. Because by default, in Windows now, Microsoft has added a, a firewall rule that blocks ICMP. So you'd have to specifically allow the protocol ICMP through the firewall for your ping to get through. And that is really to defend against any denial of service attacks where ping is used or where ICMP is manipulated to overload a machine. And we will definitely talk about that later on. I just want to introduce you to that a little bit early. Cool? Does this make sense? Hope so. Um, shoot me a message in the Discord or ask somebody some questions and some screenshots if you're running into issues with this. Um, if you didn't follow along, that's okay. You can still learn without doing exactly what I'm doing, but again, I would like you to try your best to get your hands on some equipment and really test this out. And, and here's a tip, and I'll give various tips on finding equipment throughout this class, is if, if you're having trouble getting access to equipment, just ask around. You never know what family member ha might have a laptop they're not using. Or hey, it might be a broken laptop that they'll give you, you know, as long as you fix it. So 
All these things are awesome opportunities. Local businesses that do away with old technology I often give away technology in bunches. So even if it's older tech, it's still good for practice and it's still good to kind of get your skills going, especially when it comes to networking because you really, in my belief, in those early stages of learning this, you really need to understand physically what's going on. So in this next video, we're going to go ahead and go a little bit deeper and I'm going to show you how you can remotely control another computer over the network. So I'll see you in that video.